Yo, all right. right. So look, industry rule number four thousand eighty. Record company people are shady, shady. and hey. we ain't got no umbrellas over here. Look, look, <laughs> these dudes ain't shady, dog. We got uh, these are the friends. They are friends of ours. Yeah, yeah we got Sterling. But, hold, get your Whoa. Philly shit off first, cause you about to no. do all that. No, 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 <laughs> no cause Wayno's my guy. Wayno's Wayno's from Philly. He from North Philly. Like he from North North Philly. He like. Whoa. So we know. Wayno's from Philly? We, that's know. what we call it. He's like, he's adopted Philly. Like, he's not so really from I'm New York. So I'm just around some Philly-ass niggas <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah he's not Harlem. Like, he's from Philly. Like, we, like, I assume that you was from New York, nah, bro. bro. I'll put you like this. Wayno's one of those people that, it's like. 215 stay alive, all right. No, but he's he grew up and felt like he was around Philly so much that when you see him and they be like, oh, he's the new uh, VP, QC, Wayno, Wayno will tell you where they get the steak from. Yeah, man. like, he, uh, like cool. Yo. he moved down there. So <laughs> nah, we look, man. we own him. We like, it's like Kobe. Like, how y'all say Kobe Bryant from L.A.? Yeah. No. No, that's how we look at Wayno. Like, nah, yeah, you could say he from wherever he from, but he but from yeah, Philly. Yeah, Philly, Philly dude. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm definitely honorary Philly. Definitely. Yeah. So you know how to get around with no navigation. Yeah, I know how to get around. Yeah. I, you know, it's a, I could go to every, like, neighborhood. In Philly, like oh, I got somebody in it. West, that's, that's South, good. like North, all that. Germantown, German, yeah. yeah. This ain't a whole lot, you know. Yeah. What I, mean? I know Germantown. I got yeah. love. I got super love in Philly. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> hey, hey, Sterling, I'm on my. Yeah, I know Germantown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I had them. I had them bending. You know what I mean? We was. Oh, you, you had them bending the court. Yeah, yeah. We only was, way, only way I remember Germantown because it's a production company. You're like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G town. All right, so y'all ain't. Of course, don't count for us. Yeah, no. And Sterling, Sterling from Philly. Uh, right. Uptown, Dogtown. Yo, we got a lot to talk about. It's so. It's like, where do you want to begin? Because I'm I gonna be. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like being on the radio and and TV side, but like mo mace, mo mace, mainly, uh, mainly radio. When I was in radio, I was just trying to get the TV. So I would know different industry people, like record company people, but I didn't know what they did, nor did I care because I was just trying to get to TV. <laughs> so. Yeah. I never knew. I never know knew what A and R did or what this person did or that person did. Yeah, you just went. For, you was on the radio. They was just my friends. Like, oh, they yeah. coming to the station. Cool, whatever. <laughs> yeah, We're the good. artists. We cool. Yeah, bust it up, and that was it. Yeah. So I never knew what. Like, you are like heavy on the record company side. Yeah. No, you're no. You work at the record company. Like you record yeah. company dude. <laughs> no, you say, huh? Yeah. Industry nigga. Yeah, you an industry. Yeah, you an industry, yeah, industry, yeah, industry yeah. nigga. I got such you a like, negative connotation over it. Like, <laughs> no, he is, no, you a record company dude. Yeah, yeah. You were, it's no, like, but, when I hear record company dude, I think of like Eddie Arcadian from Last Dragon. Like, right, that's great. <laughs> like, cheesy. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what you, but you be knowing on people. You know, Q say that, he go, yo, you in LA, you be knowing everybody. I'm like, eh. Yeah, but you that's what you are. Like you be snapping your fingers and pulling up people. You, you do. Hey, cha cha cha. Yeah, you like you had Sterling, what's up, you got man? corporate cards. Let's do lunch. Facts. You got yeah. corporate cards and all Listen, that. Listen, that worked out to my advantage though. You feel me? Yeah. All right, but no, all right, so all right, where do we go? All right, so I'm gonna be real with you. Sterling was like, yo, uh, we're gonna be real with y'all. So we had an interview with Wayne. We had an interview with Sterling. Uh Wayne went to LA. Wayne was gotta go. He flying somewhere. And he was like, yo, private. why don't we go on? Flying that PJ back to, you know, first yeah, class. Yeah, first Man, class. Man, not gas these people. Yeah, <laughs> back to Harlem. So, <laughs> back he's to like, Harlem. back to Harlem. He's like, yo, why don't we just do it? Do y'all smell weed? Am I smelling weed? I smell something burning. I smell weed. I, thought I, I left mine in the car, so it ain't Okay. Me. Yeah, I don't smoke. But no, all right, so, <laughs> Sterling was like, It smells yo, electrical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yo, let's do, Shit. Let's do it together. That's so, fun. all right, y'all are, first of all, congratulations, because y'all both got promotions um, you're at UC, you're at Columbia, but tell them what y'all both do. Wayne, no, starting with you, bro. Uh, yeah, like I'm, tell them where you left from to go to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> tell us where you like, started like, from. To, started from the I bottom down. Yeah. yeah. Shit, man. All right, all right, so I started in the mail room. That's why I Nigga, started. Nigga, you seen him in a documentary? Yeah, he was in But I wasn't in the mail room in the documentary. No, you but was I, not. I started, I started in the mail room delivering mail to... Um, Maybe. Not just Rockefeller. I was delivering mail of Murder Inc., Def Jam. Oh, you got the real story then. You yeah, got, I got, I got, got the, the, I got the VH1 uh, movie story. Oh like. my god! Okay, I really started. Man. The thing was, it was like I had dropped out of high school and shit. And then um, my mom, she was going to send me down south to live with my aunt because I was fucking around in the streets and. Um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah almost, but yeah. I, I'm happy she ain't sent me. Okay. You know what I mean? But <laughs> shout um, out to my Dukes on that, right? And and she just was like, "Yo, you." I'm, my mom just kept telling me, "Like, listen, I'm not gonna be working eight hours of a day, going and coming home cooking, and you just sitting here. So you need to figure yeah. out what you're gonna do with yourself." And she got me an interview for a job, uh, for a mailroom gig, and I got in there, and I had saw the movie backstage prior, and that I think right. it was like around '99, 2000. Yeah. I saw that movie, and 
when I seen that movie, it was the first time I could I, I could really identify with something. It's like I grew up in the era. We all grew up in the era. Want to be like Mike and all that shit. Yeah, I used yeah. to be tight because I was in dark skin, so I was like, I can't really be like Mike. Like, you know what I mean? Like for real, like, for real. I, I really thought like that when I was a kid. But when I seen like Tata, Lenny S, Skane, you know what I mean? Kevin Lyles, uh, all these people on on backstage. I'm like, damn, like they not you know in the booth like they i could do that i could whatever they doing i could i could it, figure that out so you figured out there's some there's a career behind the mic yeah behind the, because back, i, I want to man i can't i come from harlem everybody tried to rap i tried to rap yeah i tried what? to rap i grew up bro i grew up with t-rex you know battle rapper t-rex yeah, i grew yeah. up with him i grew up with murder mook i grew up with around all these dudes so and, you can rap no i can't do that but but I mean we, <laughs> we like, all was about tried. to put you right on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all tried. It was like like one of my homies we used to write we used to write shit like after school and then you know how it was the ciphers, right? Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, after school it might be a cipher and then yeah. I'd be like my man would be like, Yo, you gotta do your shit today and every time it came up I'd be like, Nah, I was too shy. So I just was like, you know, let me let me figure out something that I could do in music that was outside of that. And I didn't know what that was, but stars aligned for me. I got that that job in eight twenty five Eighth Avenue. And you know I'm walking around, and I thought it was—I so didn't think that, it was real. Wow. Okay. I was 17 yeah. years old. You know what I mean? Wow. I was—I was delivering mail. I was my route was the royalty department, Murder Inc., um, Fan Fan, which was Jay Z's fan club, Family Tree, um, which Blue. I never met Blue formally like that, but Blue that used to manage Outcast. Outcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Big um, Blue, yeah. Big Blue. Yeah. yeah. Um, him. Then I not, had not Black Blue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had Def Jam, all that <laughs> shit. So I was delivering mail and all that. And then I, w- I used to help out um, Omi Ellie McIntyre. She ran Jay Z's fan club, Fan Fam. Um, and her sister was the, I think she was the, she was a manager, Dara. She was a manager at uh, Rockefeller. Mm-hmm. So I used to help out with the fan club after work, you know what I mean? Like shipping wow. t shirts, anything I could do, you know what I mean? That's what got me. You my relationship. You just wanted to get on. Get on. I'd do anything, bro. Yeah. I, I'd do anything. And I, um, I had got fired from the mailroom. How you get fired How you from get the mailroom? Fired from bro? the mailroom on your day off. No, nah, listen, it actually happened on my day off too. So now nah, what what happened was it was like you know all the mail and all emails and all that that we send that we take lightly contract. How many contracts you got in your email? Hundreds. Uh, hundreds. Right. So all of these contracts used to get transferred into office, Lee, right? So we had these big boxes with yeah. the contracts. Manila folders and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, and this 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 dude, his name was Pat. He left the he left the box on my floor that came from Def Jam, and it was all these contracts in the freight area, and I was supposed to deliver it to somebody, and I forgot, and that shit got thrown out. Oh! It got thrown out. So it was all people contracts, all time. And I mean, now... Personal information. All now you could just... You know what I mean? Yo, send me the contract. You know what I mean? You, you could yeah, just you hit know. your lawyer and tell him to send it to you. Before, you can't hard just... Hard copies. It was a lot yeah, of hard, it was hard copies. Yeah, so, hard copies. Yeah, so I got fired, and then, you know, when I got fired, it was it was whatever. I got fired from the mailroom, but then I had, you know, Shari... Um, who she is the president of Rock Nation now. Shouts yeah. out to Shari. Shouts out to Shari, man. Shari was um, Carlene Balin's oh, assistant. Shout out to Carlene. Remember Carlene? Wow, yeah, it's a lot Carlene. Of, we had an acting class together. Me and Carlene. Me and, me and Carlene had acting. Yo, class. I love. I, I used to call Carlene Mama Bear, man, because she that's how she treated all of us. She was a little. She was young, but she was older than us, like me and Shari, and right. she really took us in. But uh, I just called Shari one day because I now I'm back in the hood doing nothing. I was working at a little sneaker store, but that shit wasn't doing nothing. And I was like, Yo, I don't care what I got to do. Whatever y'all want me to do, just to, I'll come to the office. I didn't know what an intern was and none of that. I dropped right. out of high school, so I ain't know what none of that shit was. Yeah. I didn't even know what the word career meant until I was like 27. It's like no bullshit. Yeah. Like, I was, I was, like, <laughs> but, but, I feel you. but, but I, I just hustled, man, and I, you know, I worked my way up. Of course, got into Rockefeller. This is around the time where, like, I met shit. I met Q around like 02. You know what I mean, yeah. at that time, I was like 19. I was, because I was running with state property. The funny thing about the Philly shit yeah. is, Jay Z thought I was from Philly. He, See? He, he thought I was from Philly. <laughs> See? Because I used to be with all the Philly guys. So one day, like, when I got this tattoo on my hand, 19 year old decision, I was at. Uh, what it says, Harlem? Yeah, it says Harlem. Okay. Fucking dumbest tattoo I could possibly get. <laughs> but uh, when I got it, I was at. Uh, Jay Z was shooting the, the Excuse Me Miss uh, video. And he was like, Harlem, he's like, why you got that on your hand? I was like, I'm from Harlem. He's like, you're not from Philly. I was like, nah. He's like, I thought your ass was from Philly. You, run, you running with these niggas all day. But that's because nobody, like, you know, in, a, in labels, you got priorities. And while Beans was a priority and Freeway was becoming a priority, Young Guns wasn't. Oskino yeah. and Sparks wasn't. And I was like, fuck it out. Me and the Young Guns, we all the same age. So yeah. I immediately gelled with them and, you know, started hanging in Philly, getting in things I had no business doing. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> 
That shit took me years and years and years and figuring shit out. When and it was down top of Hagen. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Winger Hagen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Top side. I was yeah. over, man. I was. Doing the most. Doing the most, yeah. too. Yeah. No, it was bad, bro. It was bad. It was bad. It was like, yo, I was doing shit that I'd be like, man, I think about my kids. I'd be like, please don't. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. but, um, you know, those journeys led me to, you know, start my own management company a little later and I started uh, managing Davies. You know? <laughs> That's not a light name to just say. I just started managing Dave. That's a big deal. I, it is. I it's mean, a big deal. You know what? My problem is, y'all. I, I mean, I like, I downplay everything I do. I don't know. It's, it's something. I do the same thing. It's I something play a lot. psychological. I've been learning yeah. about myself. You know what I mean? It's like you probably can't stand when people be like bragging about it. You're like, nah. Just. No, you know what it is. At the time when I was at Rock and all of that, I got yeah. so caught up. I was so young. I got so caught up. I thought that's why I tattooed my hand and my neck up. I didn't never think I would have to go get a regular job ever again. You just. It was so I was doing like, whatever. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, nah, I'm Rockefeller. Ain't nobody tell me what to do. And when they split that, it was like, <laughs> like, yeah. bro, it's like it literally was like your parents splitting up. Like what you, I, I didn't have both my parents together, but if your parents was together your whole life and and they taught and you was doing great and then they split, what you gonna do? You so you know? you were there when it, all that would start to kind of like yeah. fizzle down. I didn't know. I didn't actually know what was happening, but I, yeah, I was there. I was there for the Kanye like. I was in the documentary. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, yeah, the documentary yeah. is fire, bro. Yeah, I, it's, it's very misleading. Fire. Ooh, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. We gonna bounce. We gonna listen. Yeah, listen, we we gonna get to it. We gonna get to it. So, all right. So you go from Rockefeller to you, you Dave East. What mailroom and dibble and dabble in the streets. You know what I mean, because yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't, I don't got no diploma, so I had to you do that. You selling narcotics, huh? You selling narcotics? No, I wasn't selling no narcotics. You said streets. Yeah, yeah, I was streets. It sell a lot of different things. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, you can sell t-shirts, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. sell belts, yeah, you do all types of shit. Purses. I do yeah, not yeah. partake yeah. in nor have I sold any narcotics, but um, <laughs> <laughs> right, you can do all types of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I, um, you know that happened. Uh, I was, I was, you know, working regular jobs, and then I got laid off from the jobs, and I was just like, man, I need to do my own shit. Yeah. You know I mean? So how you find Dave East? I was so I had um I got laid off from my my job and I I was like yo it's like 2012 I think and I was like told my wife I'm like yo just give me give me eight months to figure this shit out like if if I can't figure nothing out to pay our bills like creatively what I'm doing I'll go get another job she's like all right yeah I mean we was in one bedroom apartment with three kids you feel me Jeez. it's tough so you know we we um I was I was uh hosting shows I was doing anything to make a dollar so uh this dude from this dude named Pat Swiss from SOBs, he met me and he was like, Yo, you got a great personality. You should host shows. I'm like, host shows? Like, what do that even mean? Like, he like, yeah, I'll give you the mic, like bring people out and all that shit. Yeah. And I was hosting shows. The first show I ever hosted was Ab Soul Show um in SOBs. He brought out Kendrick. Yeah, That's when he dropped yeah, Good Kid Man City, all that shit. Yeah. And then um Dave, I met Dave doing a showcase. Dave Free. No, Dave Davies. Dave Davies. Dave 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, um, so one of my, my little homies that played ball, he played for Drexel. And he um he from my block like we grew up in the same building but he played uh ball against Dave in college and he was telling me about him like yo this kid fired this down the third because I'm I'm like six or seven years older than Dave so I didn't know him and then um I met him at the the showcase and then like I got cool with him for a year and then it, I was managing producers and I couldn't sell no beats because yeah, let me get these beats on Dave then yeah because it was like bro it, this is the era like that. Piff with everybody taking your beats and just putting them out on whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yo, we we literally giving away 20 beats to sell one. And by the time we sell it, we only we ain't getting but so much. So I'm like, if I could find one artist, I could filter the beats uh, through the artist. That'd be killing two birds with one stone. With stone, it'd build the artist, and you know. And who's the producers? Buddha and Grants. Yeah, they from uh, Bronx and Queens. You know what I mean, start working with them, and then Dave. I worked with Dave for 2014. 2015. Mixtapes. Mixtapes. Yeah, mixtapes. We did uh, Black Rose, Straight of Harlem, Hate Me Now with DJ Drama, and then... Um, drama from Philly. Of, drama of from course. Philly. Yeah, drama, yeah, from drama from Atlanta, Philly. Like, <laughs> no, you're right. No, he yeah, one of those, too. He's from Philly, but he's Philly. Yeah, he You know you, you know what's the common thing amongst all people from Philly? Philadelphians. Yo, right. The common <laughs> thing about... They Philly to the bone. I don't give a fuck how long. Yo, it gets yeah. on my fucking nerves, bro. Literally. You guys be bragging too what damn much. What are you talking much. about? Compton is kind of like y'all. Be- yeah, but like, I, we just did. We do halftime. We got Kendrick. I, I, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing, Drake. No, but like you, yeah, it's I like bro. You know what I'm saying? People Woo. think people look at little Uzi and think like he's this weird kid from out of space. He's a Philly nigga. Yeah, he's Philly. Oh my god! Yeah. If you know Uzi. Yo, dog, fuck is you, y'all niggas drunk. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 you be like, if you really know him, you be like, this is how he acts. Like, yeah. 
You know, all that shit is just him being Uzi, nah, but like he really Philly. So that's one thing I always respect about Philly. But yeah, I did that for a little bit. And then we did our deal with um Def Jam. Def Jam. And that's the deal yeah. that got me out of the project. So you had you end up coming back to Def Jam anyway. You were like an intern. Oh, here. it was crazy. Oh, it I, was crazy. It had to be. Yeah, it was crazy. It was it was a surreal moment. Like Lisa, the, I think the only person that was still there from when I was delivering mail was Lisa Brunson. Shouts out to Lisa, yo. Love Lisa, bro. I love Lisa, yo. Bro, me and Lisa cried when we I did that deal. Really? Yo, she brought me in her, in her office. She, she was like, nigga, you don't understand how. Because she when I was a kid and I was delivering mail to her, <laughs> she would hype me up. I wow. come to her office. She was super like, supportive. Yeah, like what, I was. What's her title? What's her? What the, Lisa had three hundred now, right? Yeah. Well, what was her title at Def Jam? She was like the, she was the head of like NR admin. Okay. So everything deliverable went through her. Got so it. she had like to you, see everything. You have to turn your album in her. And I'm talking about. She's a glue. Golden era yeah. to Nas coming there to I mean everybody. She's ludicrous when he first signed. Lisa was there for a long time. She used wow. to give me CD. So when I was a kid, she used to hype me up. What's up, man? What you doing? It's Friday, nigga. Here go nice, the CD. Nice, nice. Here go to Source Magazine. Give me some confidence. You feel me? Yeah. Lisa used to have a pull up bar and the. <laughs> like, as soon as you walk into her office, yeah. When I first met her, she was like, No, you got to hit the bar. So I'm like, Are you serious? Yeah. You do pull ups? I had to do pull ups. She was like, All right, bet you ain't no regular R&B nigga. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you, you got there around like 05. Yeah. See, it was crazy. Even with me and Sterling, Sterling my cousin, my cousin Daryl, he was living in Atlanta and he told me about my cousin, he rapped. And he used to tell me, He's like, Yo, this dude, his name's Sterling. He about to be on Jay Z album. I be working with him. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah. Crazy. Because I ain't used to take, I mean, I ain't going for, my cousin, he could rap, but I ain't used to take him serious. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, I got I, relatives I, that can sing and rap. Yeah. I don't take yeah. them serious I either, bro. Serious. I don't, I don't. I wish Daryl would have played ball or some shit. Like, he was a creative kid, but he, I, I didn't take him serious with the music, but he used to tell me about Sterling. So it's like the first time me and Sterling licked up, I'm like, hey, you know Daryl? He's like, hell yeah, yeah. that's my name. Yeah. I was like, "Well, like, that's my cousin. He's like, for real? So it just immediately clicked us up. I didn't realize Sterling was an artist till. Last year Bruh. when Q told me, I was like, yeah, let's get the fuck out. He's like, yo, pull up the video. I'm Bruh. like, yeah, he was really on this He's shit. He's in the video. Bro, like, you oh. was you on Dig a Hole? I was on Dig a Hole. He's on Dig a Hole, man. Bro, when, I, when <laughs> you told me that and I had to look at the video, I'm like, I said, oh, he. this is why he's a good a and on. Philly behind that record. Bro. Yeah. I didn't care, though. But one day I was, I was hanging out with Sterling. We was mm -hmm. at the, with some meeting and Sterling started singing. I'm like, wait, is this nigga... Is he tripping? Is that, I'm like, this nigga really hold a note. Uh, but you was just over yeah. there listening to music, <laughs> and I didn't know. And I, I think I told you, you like, yo, he was an artist. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yo, you know what's crazy, though? It, it, what I think is so dope about Sterling and, like, many others, right, is, like, to be an executive in music, you got to understand music, right? Like, so for myself, I didn't... What, what, what helped, what's always helped me in my career mm -hmm. is been, like, me taking myself and putting myself in the seat of being a, a kid that loved music. Mm -hmm. So it's like... I'm 39, but I can remember when I was 19, so I know what made me click. So it's like, yeah. I understand why a 19-year-old kid loves K-Flock, because K-Flock's content is the same as Styles P's when I was a kid. Mm. It's just the delivery is different. Yeah, yeah. relate to so, it. Yeah. So, like, with, with Sterl, it's like, him being an artist, it's like, oh, who better than to... Like, you if you... It, that's what, what basketball players be so critical about, like, the analysts, right? They be like, yo, who the fuck is this? You thing? never play. You ain't play no ball like yeah. you. Like, how you critiquing me based on analytics that, and you ain't never sprained your ankle for bro, real? That's why TNT is the best because them niggas play. Yeah. Like, you know Except what I'm for saying? Ernie, but we love Ernie. Ernie. I mean, Ernie, come on. Ernie's, Ernie's the drive greatest, shit. bro. Yeah, you know, Ernie drive the shit, but you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. they know, you know what I mean? They Those know what it is. Yeah. Success. Talk, you know what I'm so saying? So it's like, yeah, so I always looked at it like, like for myself, it's just like, all right, I understand, like, I understand what made me click. So it's like I always, and that's the thing I learned that Rockefeller broke Jay. You know, it's a big controversy about how Jay and Chris and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's he took, took his style. style, no, he did. Well, well I say did. What, what I say about <laughs> Jay and I Chris, love Jay, was, but he did. I would, I, would, I need some young boys. I want to take some young boys. Yeah, yo, like, he, give me some energy. but you know, that's how he stayed young. This like, niggas like Raz Al Ghul. Like, <laughs> like he stay, he stay young by staying next to the youth. Yeah, right. Like, and and who that's who the thing. Style? Young Chris, Jay Z took Young Chris style. Now, no, now, now, said, now, listen. I'm, I'm not. Come on. I've always felt like that if you fast forward, the nigga Drake does the same thing. Yes. Oh, yeah, like yeah. All, these all the rappers yeah. do it though. Yeah. They be it's smart. So They're the borrowing. Thing, I, I've literally like like. So the thing is Kanye like. Kanye does right? it. He did it. Ice Kanye does yeah. it. Yeah. Come on. Kanye does it with all the Y'all remember all the yeah. Ice Cube sound like real. Huh? Ice Cube had a be real moment. He started sounding like, mm, I'm like yeah, mm. but that's what you said. Um, it's not a diss. It's just like yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. It wasn't right. like Jay Z wasn't gonna be Jay Z without Young. But Chris. is it wrong to right. influence great? 
No, I'm as a as an old head, you're supposed to be like, how how y'all wearing y'all jeans, young yeah, fella? Yeah, like you yeah, supposed yeah, to do that, yeah. like yeah, you're supposed to do that. Yeah, that's but we get in our culture, we get penalized for it. That's because yeah. our culture, yo, man. I'm happy you said our culture because our culture, everything that's right is detrimental to us. Oh yeah, we hate oh, man, everything. Hate. We hate yeah. everything. Tesla influenced everybody to start doing more electric cars. Yeah, I mean, that's but like, that's a lot. No, of my I, same analogy. No, yeah, you, know, really you really always right. got to pull some Tesla shit. I love going, my Tesla. But, but, Shout out um, to Tesla because gas is high as giraffe. Nah, I love, right it. I love Tesla. I just seen some shit about gas. So I ain't got to yeah, worry about I that. Ain't worry about <laughs> that shit. <laughs> all right, so all right, so we 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 got a midway mm-hmm. through Wayno. All right, Sturl, we we know you you are with A and R. He was Columbia, right? A and R, senior, senior, VP. Senior, you oh, he break it down. He said Q. He said, he said Q. Break, he said Q. Put the put the VQ. Let me, <laughs> Q. Let me break it down. So when they start doing that VP, senior VP, EVP, okay. it's talking about the salary. The salary. Oh, <laughs> they be like, that's, that's why. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, you got to, see. You're yeah. my you're my label inside. Yeah, it is. it's important to have them initials. Yet. Yeah, ain't there yet. The VP <laughs> is. Yo, he's funny. Yo, yo, he's funny. Yeah, but yeah. start twitching. All right, so see, senior <laughs> VP. No, just VP. Oh, just v- VP. Okay, yeah. VP of A and R. But it'll be VP next A&R. year. It'll be yeah. senior. Like we, we get it. Okay, so VP of A and R at Columbia. That's a, which is a big deal. What does that mean? Because this is me from the outside looking in, y'all. Y'all the industry, y'all the. Yeah, I mean, y'all don't record niggas. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait. First of all, let me get my scumbag shit off. You gonna work with Chloe? No, nah, I work with Holly. Holly? Which one I like? Uh, you like Chloe. Shout to Holly. You got to relax. Shout out to Holly. Holly she, I know she's been working with JD, right? Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. Uh, but all right, back, back up. So VP of A&R at Columbia, you've been there for a little bit. No, a just a few co- weeks. Few, yeah, few yeah, weeks. Yeah, oh, this yeah. is fresh. It's fresh. Oh, for 88, fresh. you saw. Okay. All right. So <laughs> yeah, even a month in. Let's go back. Maybe your new me was different. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's go back. Cause I me and Sterl, like I, I want I want to say this publicly. Like me and Sterl, I'm known from Philly, but one thing Sterl did for me, um, oh man. So You performed on your show? No. Oh shit. No. <laughs> I'll put it to you like this. Is it cool? I'll tell the story. Go ahead, man. Go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. um my first son, he's born. We living in LA. When I moved to LA. I don't know a bunch of people, but you know me. I, no, but we met. Yeah, we met. Oh, this, but you always yell. I mean, you yeah, yeah. Sterling, but like because you, you are when you came out here, like my man Sterling. He's yeah, in the he lived he's, like he's a, always say that. A so block from me. Smoke, so thing. my my first son is born, but I had to come back to Philly. So I'm, I'm talking about my my first son is born. The next day I had to move. To, I had to go back to Philly. I had to host some shit. So Sterling and his girl took my freaking son and my wife home. Newborn. Newborn home, like you had to go. Like drove my wife and my newborn oh, that's a big deal. home. Like I, I mean, we was cool before that, but like that took our relationship to a whole. Uh, like, yeah, that's that trust. Was, yeah. yeah, I was nervous as shit driving that car. <laughs> 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 yeah, my man, newborn yeah, so in this, the back with his lady. Like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's a. That's so this a big is this is like <laughs> this is like way more than my guy. Um, Wayno, no, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you talk said about Wayno drove your second kid. Oh my yeah, God. yeah, Wayno, yeah, Wayno <laughs> took my second kid home. But no, so Sterl, like I, I met you. I think you were probably like 16, 16 17 and years old. Your cousin took brought you up to the radio station. Shout out to IQ. Yeah, IQ, <laughs> IQ, the master of everything. He's um, an artist too. Sometimes, you know, okay. what I mean, he's you a book, know. book publisher. <laughs> he's a jack of uh, jack of all trades. Russell Simmons know. whisperer. Like he does, he does a lot. You got a shout out to him. Oh, uh, but all right, talk about like. That time, 16, 17 years old, you singing, and then a couple years later after that. I think I might have had cornrows back then. We all uh, had yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I yeah. stopped mine off early, dog. You know what I'm saying? I still got my line. <laughs> Hello. I stopped my line. <laughs> but no, nah, man, I was, I was still, back then, I was still trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? It was right yeah. before I moved to Atlanta. Um, oh, yeah. And I remember you know, I seen you in Strokers one night. It was crazy. I'm sorry. It, That's yeah, old love, man. Was it a Tuesday? No, it's a week. It was a week. Yeah, this is a oh, week. Oh, man. Yeah, you Strokers, came in. It's sure to be on tilt. And then yeah. I'm sorry. Down, I'm, I'm cutting you off. All right. <laughs> we'll stay on topic. Long time yeah. ago. Long time ago. <laughs> um, but no, 16. like, during that time, I was still trying to figure it out. Just moving around in the city, recording. Um, you know, my mom kind of saw, I guess, where I was kind of headed, you know, being in Philly. So she packed up and moved, me and my family, uh, to Atlanta. Um, it was a lot slower, a little chill. And um, I was able to network and move around out in Atlanta, made a name for myself, and eventually just ended up getting signed. What got Atlanta. you to sing, start singing? Was it like... Well, I've been singing since I was three. So that church, was, was it just somebody in the family? No, nah, my grandfather was a musician, and um, like he, he used to like record. He had a st- studio in his basement, so 
Wow. I would come downstairs. I would go to his house on the weekends, and I would just be downstairs and just watching. Really? up everything. And then, uh-huh. you know, I recorded my first song when I was six. What? And what was the name of that song, man? Yeah, I, I've been, I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't remember that joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I, I did a lot of theater when I was a young boy. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I've, I've been on stage pretty much my whole life. Damn, that's crazy. Was you doing Freedom Theater? I didn't do Freedom Theater. There was another, con- there was a, um, a theater group in Philly uh, called the Rainbow Company. And they used to go to different schools and host like workshops. And they yeah. would get the kids to write plays. And then they would hire actors to actually perform the plays for the school. And so I, um, I auditioned for the group and I ended up making it on the, on the squad. And so we used to tour around cities doing uh, performances for the school. What? That's hard. Yeah. So like before I was 16, I had did like, Is- if you ever been in Philly, like you know all the theaters in Philly, like the Arts Bank, Merriam Theater, the Wilma Theater. Yeah. Um, I did all them drums before what? I was, you know what I'm saying, before I was even 16. So you, you know acting and singing as a kid. Yeah, as a kid. Dope. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and then when I got to Atlanta, it was all it was all music. You know what I'm saying? Just, just But that's when music. Atlanta probably was popping though. Ooh. Oh, cracking. Like, you know, J D and Dallas Austin was at running like, it. it. Was running it. LaFace was popping. Like you That's know a good time saying? to be in Atlanta. Um, I ain't gonna front. <laughs> and you know, I hooked up with these kids, these guys out there. Um, shouts out Mr. Fist and Diggy Dimes. They was a part of a crew called Midnight Marauders. Midnight Marauders used to throw a lot of parties in Atlanta, um, and Buckhead in particular. Um, that's like behind them I met B Cox and all like my man Kenny Burns and all the yeah, guys at Kenny Newtown. Burns. Like, wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um like it's crazy, like you know, I you talk about you know, J D and um mm-hmm. and Holly and all I'm like you know, I put I put Holly in the studio with JD last week, and it was almost like a full circle moment. I was telling Holly, I was like, "Yo, these guys have known me since I was 15, 16 years old." That's dope. Shit is hard. Yo, crazy. that's just yeah. I love, yeah. I love those feeling. moments. Yeah. Like, great they moments. watched me grow up in the business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, even you know, fast forward. I know I'm skipping a bunch of stuff, but when it, when I wanted to transition from you know artist to executive, I'm not gonna say it was an easy transition, but it was a transition that was kind of seamless for me because my relationships were there already. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was best friends with all writers, producers, and executives. Like, so, relationships. Yeah, relationships that will sustain you, period. Man, what, what, was that, what was that moment? Because, all right, so, and, like, you skipped a lot. I skipped a whole lot. But you signed, you signed to Def Jam. Yeah, so my first my first major deal was with with, was with Def Jam. I signed with them in 2006. What? Um, my Your man first Ron, deal was with Def Jam? Def Jam. Ray Romulus, my man, Ray Romulus. Ray. Shouts out to Ray. What up, Ray? Stereotypes. Um, he was working at Def Jam at the time. Um, he brought me up into the building, and I performed for L.A. Reid on his birthday, 2006, and they didn't let me leave. Are you serious? Wow. And you end up working with L.A. Reid later? Later. My, wow. whole, my whole career has been one full circle moment, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. came in the game with my man Donnie Meadows. Um, shout out to Donnie. Shout out to Donnie. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> me and Donnie came into this thing together, and, um, you know, Along the way, after I got signed, we we met Jay Irving and Troy Carter. We ended up partnering with Jay Irving um, and Troy on the yeah, on the yeah, management yeah. side. Let me tell you about how he found Oak and Pop on. No, no, we shout my brothers. You discovered Oak and Pop? It's another story. <laughs> <laughs> another story. The boy, nah, the boy you know, ears is good. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, nah, I ain't gonna say. So know, when they when up. when yeah, so they started doing the management side. They started doing the management thing, and you know what I'm saying, um, you know Jay. And Donnie co-managed me for years. And then so my first job as an executive um, was actually with Jay Irvin and Troy Carter on their, ma- their management Bro, do you realize who you, like, you're. <laughs> I'm blessed, man. I, I, I've been I blessed, feel like man. I'm blessed, right? I've been blessed, I feel like, man, so you're standing next to, like, great relationships and, and friendships, first of all. Sure. And you're not, like. You're bringing a lot to the table without saying, you know, what can you do for me? Like, nah, I can do this. No, too. and like it was crazy. Like, these are legit my friends. Like, like we, like we're on group chats together. And we talk about our families all day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And how we can, how we can help each other out. But you know, they, like these are legit my homies. You know what I'm saying? So, um, in that regard, like I, I know that I'm blessed. But you know, it's also a testament of just keeping your relationship solid and being a solid nigga throughout this shit. Like, this shit yeah. ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, there are a lot of times, like, I see a bunch of kids that make, you know, decisions out of despair or, you know, they may be going through a hard time at the time instead of being loyal to their people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, fam, weather the storm together, y'all eat together, and, and everybody sees it. 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody sees that. You know what I'm saying? When you do the opposite, everybody sees that too. Yeah. They treat you as such. You know what I'm saying? And so, right. you know, you got to keep your relationship solid all throughout, man. You don't never know where you're going. If you if you had asked me, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if I'd have been an executive, I'd have told you, hell no. Yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, yeah, that's bro. crazy. Hey, hell no, man. That wasn't that wasn't what I saw for my life. Being you know an I'm artist, saying? though, that's like, right. and I know uh, there's a, been a lot of successful artists go from artist to executive. I remember you came you came to my crib. You was like, "Yo, I'm I'm s- switching over." I'm like, yeah. you "Sure." What was the one moment that was like, "I think I'm gonna go over here." I lost the love for it, mm. for that side. You know what I'm saying? It was it was um. What was a few things? One. I had a kid on the way, mm. you know what I'm saying? That was that was number one. Um, actually, no, that was I was on baby number two. I just had to, I had my okay. daughter on the way. My daughter was on the way, and I was just like, yo, I got to figure this shit out. It's crazy with with a daughter do for you, like <laughs> yeah. yeah my, I only have a, I have a daughter. I had my son, and it was like it's my little nigga. We good, like you know what I'm saying? Daughter make you change. My daughter, up. yeah. It's like, oh no, we got to get to the bag and double and triple it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know that's a fact. That's I a need fact. insurance. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's like, a fact. <laughs> shit is real. But, you know what I'm saying, like, for me, um, again, like I said, I, I've been singing since I was six, three, you know, recorded my first song when I was six, so my trajectory with this shit is a lot different than others, you know what I'm saying, like, I look at it, my career now at 39, I've been in this shit 25 plus years, you know what I'm saying, I've been doing this shit for, so, for that long, and so, you know, when I looked at it at the time, it was like, all right, I had a great, I had a cool career as an artist, but let me look at where my relationships lie and let me see how I can really make this shit work for myself because something ain't something ain't clicking, right? And so when I when I looked at you know where my relationships were, it was all with producers, songwriters, and executives. Mm-hmm. Like, and I was legit friends with all these guys. Like, you know, but as an artist, those relationships were hitting the cap because uh. you know the writers and producers. We only really did shit when I was working on my shit. You know what I'm saying? It was seldom that I would I would want to write for somebody else. So if I wrote a record that was dope for somebody else, I, I ended up wanting to keep it. Keep for it for me. yourself. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And then so my relationships did with with hitting the cat. The executives, if I weren't signed to you, my nigga, we weren't getting no money together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we kick it and go on everything else. We go watch games, we talk mm-hmm. chicks, we do everything else, right? right? But when it came to getting a dollar, we couldn't really do it because I wasn't signing them. You know what I'm saying? And so me removing myself from that and crossing over is like, oh, now I can make plays and get money with everybody. Uh, and my conversation is different. And now these relationships are actually making more sense. It, open, it opened up your view. It opened up everything. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, it, it, it worked out. I, you know, I've been, I've been running ever since. And, it, you know, it, at times it almost makes me wonder, like, where I would have been if I had jumped earlier. But I yeah, also needed that. I also needed that, to, you know what I'm saying, to build that stock. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember getting my first pub gig at Universal. Well, not at Universal. That was my first major one. My first pub gig was with Songs Publishing. Um, my second one, I was with Universal Pub. And I looked at my roster, and I was like, yo, these are all my homies. Looking at Hip Boy and Sunny Digital, Cool Dre, and, you know, Casey Barf. And I'm huh? like, these are all folks. my folk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. These mm-hmm. are all people I know or I have relationships with. And, you know what I mean? I'm like, this is a plug and play. Y'all want to pay me to talk to these guys? <laughs> <laughs> say less. And get, place, <laughs> and get places while I talk get to them? Insane. I talk to them. Yeah. Like, say less. It's like, all right, now you're giving me a check to do something I've already been doing. I was just doing it for free. Like, you know what I'm but saying? But it's still, like, like, and let's, let's keep it clear. Like, it's still work, everybody. But 1,000%. We, we, we enjoy what we do. It's still work. It's still, it's, our job is 24-7. No, that's, that's, that's the part a lot of people don't understand. They understand it's 24-7. It's, my phone don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm responding to text messages and emails even while I'm doing this. Like, it yeah. doesn't stop. That's you know what I'm saying? And right. you got to be able to live and breathe it, man. I don't I don't, I don't live by the 9 to 5 code. I've just never been built that way. You know what I'm saying? You never got to the point you at. Never. Yeah. Not being that way, for real. <laughs> right. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, you got to be built for it. And you got to, the resilience wins in this shit, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting, like, just having both of y'all here. Y'all both the same age. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was like, this. we ain't even playing this, right? Yeah, it's both, crazy. Right? I didn't know he was going to be, when he yeah. pulled up, I was like, oh, wait, I went yeah, out. <laughs> so, yeah. y'all both the same age. Y'all both became A&Rs from different routes, yeah. right? And now you guys are sitting, you know, on, on top doing what you guys do. Like, for people out there that don't know, like, tell us what an A&R does and what specifically for you with QC, what you do, Specifically with Columbia, what you do? 
man. Same but different. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I always tell people about A&R mm-hmm. is like the number one factor in like like Stero said he answering emails and texts, be available. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I learned very, very early in my career, right? It's like when I was an intern, I was always the one that was willing to go get the food. Right. Or willing to go do this, or willing to go pick up the sneakers for that artist. Or, yep. or just make yourself available. And I think that like I'll never get out of that mode. So like just for me, what what I do, and uh, people say, Oh, and uh, what what y'all do? You sit in the office all day. No, I don't. I'm not <laughs> I'm in LA right now. Like you know what I mean? I'm not at home. I'm I'm from New York. I live in Atlanta now. But what I what I do is I go out, I find talent, I curate the music that that talent makes, or mm-hmm. when they when they come in, I just give us give suggestions. It's like I get paid to think and speak, right? Yep. <laughs> it's it's to give suggestions. I'm a coach. That's that's all yeah. I really am. I'm I'm okay. really a coach. It's like you know, I just recently signed um an artist uh, by the name of Baby Money. He's from Detroit, right? And when I signed him, he told me that like the only person he had in his corner that used to really critique his music was his man that passed away. Mm. So he was like, "Yo, you know." Um, would it be possible? Like, just sharing with me. Like, you know what I mean? Would it be possible? I'm like, that's what I'm here for. But it's just being honest with them and and not sugarcoating shit and just making it or, or just doing my job. I feel like as an a you have to go above and beyond, right? It's like, like Sterl said, him looking up and seeing how many people he looked at his Rolodex and it's like, I know all these motherfuckers, right? Mm. That's the same thing for me. Everybody, almost, Rockefeller produced more executives than it did artists. Man. Wow. More executive now. Mm-hmm. Don't get me they wrong. Had a lot of artists. Back in them times, everybody had their moments. Y'all want to do verses and all that. We could go back to the time. I'm talking about right now. There's mm-hmm. more successful executives, executives that, that, that came from that tree than that come from that tree yeah, yeah, yeah. Than, than artists. You know what I'm saying? And it, the the thing that I do as a as an ANR is I try to be on the edge of whatever is going on, whether that's the street, the internet. A lot of people talk shit about research, like oh. Man, research. I'm like, yo, dog. This shit ain't a, the Salt and Pepper movie where they performing and you meet them in the back of the club and say, "Here's a contract." That's not how shit works. <laughs> yeah, no. Research helps, but the thing about it is not just using research, but identifying what goes for QC as a brand. I haven't signed the artist you, off of research, but, but I you, can't, it's instinct, bro. You know how many relationships I built off of research? Because every artist that, that comes shit go hand in hand, man. You can't have one without the other now. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what's, what research are you looking at? So research, you get you got guys in the building that do that check all the analytics. Mm-hmm. So you okay. drop a record, they're, they're checking the engagement, they're mm-hmm. checking to see how many streams you're getting per okay. week, they're mm-hmm. checking, you know, what I'm saying all of it, and so. You know, in this space now, especially in the TikTok era, right? You get a lot of records that are just moments. There's seventy records, seventy thousand records coming out a day, a day, a day, fam. Right? So we can't, we're not, we can't monitor all that shit. <laughs> You're not right? jumping on a plane, <laughs> jumping to every region. No, can't, it's fam. impossible. It's impossible, yeah. fam. Impossible. So like, you have these guys in, in research, and it's their job to, it's their job to alert us when something is being reactive. When it rears its head. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I think. The great part of what, you know, the school that me and Wayno come from is we come from the school with like real A and R. Like you gotta, you gotta have an ear for it. So I yeah. think our our place now is like, all right, cool, we get that from research. Is this a moment or is this a is career? This a moment or is this yeah. a career? Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, nah, you know what? Longevity. You should probably just sign that song. You know what I'm saying? But as I'm not opposed to as opposed to I'm not giving deals. that nigga. Yeah, 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 I'm not going in the in the, in the studio with this nigga for six months. Right, and and, <laughs> and and to and to his point, like, right, it's like when certain shit comes in on the research side. A lot of the research guys, while they're very talented at identifying and finding out the numbers and all that, because that is a skill. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a, it's not just all algorithms and all that shit. A lot of it is a skill. You still got to be able to court the artist, right? Fact. Just because I, you found an artist for me doesn't mean that when I call him, he immediately or she immediately going to be like, okay, give me the money, right? It's like... It's still, we, it's still relationships. It's still, the relationships. Relationship. And we've been, like, I feel like, for Sterl, he's been in that that's that situation for being an artist on the come up. For me, I've been in that situation on being a young AR trying to come up. And we know what it is to fight for what it is we want. We know what it is yep. to, to try to climb that fucking mountain and get kicked down every day. So it's like coming in with a, a, a conversation that for me, I don't lead with money. You know what I mean? Like I, I lead with like, yo, what you trying to do? I mean, like what what, what do you want to accomplish? Conversation, I gotta, yeah, man. I gotta know yeah. if I could if I could be an asset or not. Yeah, you know for real. And I and I and I don't want to sign no assholes. You know what I mean? Like I don't Woo-hoo. I don't want to sign assholes well, like that. I mean it's it's hard to avoid them sometimes, but it's hard to avoid, the, the, but the, they're the, out there. The <laughs> thing about it is is like, you know, music, I see a lot you know, people always say, Oh, you can't mix like you can't make no friends and no family 
out of this music shit. And that's the biggest misconception it is. And that, that's a lot mm-hmm. of my niggas that I did, I consider family. I met in this business. I met in this business. And the thing really? about it is, but that's our culture, right? Yep. Oh, no. Nah, no new friends all day one. Yes, yeah, Man, this motherfuckers I met two years ago that's closer to me than people <laughs> I've known since kindergarten. Oh, right. <laughs> Yo, for real. But it, yeah. but I think that the, the, the common denominator amongst us all is that we just want to win and be better people. Yeah. Wow. I mean, like, that's, that's what it really is. Let me ask you guys yeah. a question. When you work in multiple or you're A&R multiple projects, mm-hmm. How do you decipher, like, oh, man, I need to hold this record for so-and-so? <laughs> Damn, like, do you guys have to put things in silos? Like, all right, this artist gets this, this artist A lot gets of my that. records, I, I'm, I'm doing from scratch. Like, I, I don't, it, it, it isn't, it's, it's, kind of, it's funny because coming from the publishing side, it was my job to pitch records all day, right? And now, but now you're receiving seat, it. Mm-hmm. I'm receiving records, and I'm like, I'm probably not going to use 90% of this, right. right? You know what I'm saying? A lot of my joints come from, just putting the artist in with the producer and the writer, and I'm coming up with it from scratch. Right. So once that marriage has happened, that marriage is that, that record is theirs. That, right. That's that. You just said something, and I think a lot of people, even me, thinks that somebody may think of something and they go to the studio and it's a hit, right? Yeah. I know better than that. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But talk about that process of you sit with the artist A, they say, hey, I want to do some, on this album, I want to go street. Right. And are the, there's like, you go to a publisher, they got street records for that person, and y'all picking through? Like, is well, it like know, shopping? The, the, the thing I say is, is like, you know, I got a great relationship with publishers, writers, all of that. But like, the, the, what really happens, the magic happens, like, we keep room. reiterating in the room, but your relationships, right? It's like, mm. a lot of people know, I, I'll just give a reference, Derek Milano. A lot of people know Derek Milano. Mm-hmm. I could call Derek Milano at five o'clock in the morning. And if I tell him, yo, I need you to come to Atlanta or New York, he gonna do it, and that's and and that's that's not just purely based off of, um. That's Philly hustle right there. So yeah, you know, that's out the dirt. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's a fact. <laughs> okay. It, Philly ball. Yeah, Philly, okay. Yeah, what, Philly that, ball? That's, what I'm saying is like that's not based on you know us just making a record. That's because he knows I'm a good guy. One thing a, a, about my career is that like, yes. yo, me being a fucking good guy. Bro, this shit has saved my life. Oh, like, man, oh man, bro, I remember. I've never heard anything either from. I ain't never heard nothing sideways about none of y'all. Yo, you not dude. going to. You, you try. You not, yo, my, my homegirl. Let my me know when you're doing. I'm going to fix it tonight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yo, my homegirl, she works for a big film company. And she hit me one day. and She hit me when, when my press release came out. And she was like, yo, she, she just was like, yo, the best thing about this shit is I done came across hundreds, maybe thou- a thousand people that know you. I ain't never heard nothing negative about you. That dead ass. But you know what that comes from? That just comes from me being... Being the nigga that my mom raised me to be, solid. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, like yeah. following up. You know what I mean, like it's it, it, following up, being courteous. It's like, no, nah, like we we can build a relationship. It's nothing wrong. It's a thin line between persistence and annoyance, right? Yeah. But it's nothing wrong with you hitting me up on. I don't celebrate Christmas, but you saying, "Yo, man, you know, happy holidays to your fam." Yeah. yeah. How, you, how you doing today, bro? You wouldn't believe how many people when my press release came out remembered I was alive. Hello, <laughs> your new friends. No, yeah. not even. Just people, yo, I've been trying to get at you. How? My number's still the same. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and I'm not knocking that because a lot of people want what they want out of you. I understand that. I understand that in order for me to be useful, I have to be used, right? And I know yeah. that, yeah. You, but just don't misuse me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't don't, don't misuse bar. that, you know? Yeah, no, that, that's crazy. So, Sterl, how is it, and you, for you, it's a, it's a little bit of an advantage because you know what the artist is going through. Right, like you've been. I can understand. Art, it, I understand the crazy. Right. Like, yeah. Like they, 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 the most brilliant ones are a little left the center, if you will. Like, follow me. You know what I'm saying? But I could. I speak the dialogue. I understand the language. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I had a. Um, I remember when I was. I, I'm not going to name the name, but I remember as a publisher, I had this writer. Nobody wanted to work with this person. They were like, "Yo, this nigga's lazy. Come to the studio, fall asleep, blah blah blah." So I'm like, I talk. I was like, "Yo." I'm going to jump in, but, like, what's the what's the issue? She's like, yo, I'm not inspired, right? And so I'm like, okay, I get it. And so I go to the producers, and I'm like, I need you to go in with this writer. Yo, man, it's lazy. I don't ever – I said, all right, well, what's your process? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I come in, and I start doing the beat, and then, you know, I look over, and she sleep on the couch. I said, that's where you fucking up at. I said, this ain't that kind of writer. This writer's a, it, like, start with piano or guitar. You know what I'm saying? Do the beat and finish the track later. Get the song. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They did that. She went and she did five ideas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to understand the language and understand just the process. Everybody's got a different kind of process. Right. Y'all like you know a, y'all like directors. Pretty yeah. Yeah. And th- and they're also therapists. Yo, I, I remember one time, bro, I was with Rico Love and he said this shit about Quincy Jones. He was like, yo, he said, because he was telling me about how he produces and he was like, he's like, I don't hit the machine. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Right, right. But he's like, he's like, Quincy Jones might have been like, yo, you do them drums. You do that, you do this, you do that, and then they make Thriller. So, like, and, and, I, and more recently, like, you know when you watch a movie when you're a kid, right? You watch a movie when you're a kid, and when you get older, you you start realizing shit like, damn, I didn't know that that's what they was talking about. I started listening, going back and listening to the music, right? And one day I went back and I listened to Thriller, and I was like, one, it's nine records on that album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One through nine, these niggas ain't bullshit on not <laughs> one. One song. Yeah. I'm Home runs about, on every yeah. record. Bro, Home run. Every, no every fillers. record is up here. I'm like, yeah. God damn. Like I'm, but when we're kids, we just dance and have a fun. Right. But I'm listening like, so so it made me think about that process, right? It's like, okay, I'm I'm a coach. I, my analogies always come from basketball. I'm the, I'm the coach that's going to tell you, yeah, man, you need to work on your left. But like, if you really strengthen that shit, and you coming down, they not going to know if you left-handed or right-handed. I'm not just going to tell you work on your left. Right. I'm going to tell you, like, yo, you, like, a lot of artists I might come to that, that are R&B artists, this, this, this one artist I was pursuing, and she's, she's really good, right? She has all the basics, but I'm like, are you open to getting in with other people? Because how can you get better if you don't know what you're up against? Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Nobody don't go to war without a plan and win. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. a fight. You know what I mean? Like, it's more like nobody counts the fights. That's one. They count the, the battles. You know what I mean? So it's like for me, I, I, I strategize and I'm like, all right, yo, let me call such and such. They got, let's put them in there with them. Let's put them with, with them. Oh, I wanted to say something about like when you was talking about the, um, how do you decide the songs? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like even with me being at QC, right? It's like right now I'm working on like City Girls album. Right? Hello. And shouts out to them. I love them. They're crazy, but I love them. But, um. We got City Girls and we got Lakia. They're both, they, you know, two, two, uh, a group with two women and then a solo act that's a woman. The way I decipher them about picking the records is, is like, I feel like to have a record is like tailor made. It's almost like a suit. You know, when you're building out an album, it's like you want to build out a, a wardrobe, right? And you want every single, every single outfit that go on to fit that project. So it's like, yeah, you would look good wearing that shit, but that ain't for you. It's a yeah. lot of hooks that like shit. If I could get if I, I could get a Chris Brown hook tomorrow and go gold, yeah, me right, and right, I ain't right, never right. saw one of a fucking record <laughs> in my life. Yeah, so yeah. it's like we ain't just going. We not just going to take the regular joint. Like what's the story? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like what, what what's the storytelling? I came up around Beanie Siegel and them. They were storytellers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like that's the, the biggest thing about this music shit is this, it's a movie and we all playing roles. Yeah, you know what I mean how we, much how much conversation are you having? I know you working. You see, Chloe. Holly. 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 Sorry, Holly. I'm, I know I know you watch the FEQ podcast. I, pro, I apologize. <laughs> mm-hmm. How much are you, how much conversation are you having? I try to have as much as possible. You yeah. Know, like, it, it's, you know, someone like Holly, like, she's sued, like, she's filming a, a lot right Super now. Super busy. You know what I'm saying? So, again, I'm three weeks in, so I'm like, I'm having as many conversations with her as I, as I need to, just to kind of understand what she's trying to deliver, because it's my job to help tell her story, right? And yeah. help if she if it's a blank canvas right now, I got to get her all the tools needed in order so she can paint her her perfect portrait. You know what I'm saying? This is her yeah. debut project, so she wants it to be perfect and um, you know, talking to her and figuring out, all right, what sonics are you looking for? If you could have Who do you any, like? Yeah, who do you like? If you could have any song that's out right now, which one is it? Mm. It's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And I can kind of piece from that like all right, you know what? You should probably work with this person. You should probably work with this person. You should work with this person because they can do these type of songs. You but know going over to JD's house is a it's a like, it's a camp. I'm a, I'm a fan of just like like I don't I'm not a, I'm not the guy. That, I think I said it the other day on my Instagram. Like I'm not a fan of projects with 20 producers on there. Like if there's no vibe. Like you know what I'm saying? It, right. Aside from the front film, an A&R perspective, it's a fucking nightmare to try to get all that shit oh, together. Man. Like, it's yeah. a lot of deliverables, a lot of niggas to talk to. Yeah, yeah. You know a lot saying? of sessions to right. find. Right. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, I, like, I'm a fan of, uh, like, if you listen to any project that's ever been deemed a classic, and you look at the credits, it's only two, three producers on that mm. joint. It's a vibe, it's a story, and like... Everybody clicking. Everybody's clicking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think, yo, to your point, I think that like, because it... When you're going to work on a project and you're going to have multiple producers, right? 
if you can, and I, I feel like a strong a and R could do this because I'm trying to do this right now. When I'm working on the next project, I want to put like it's only like four producers I want. Now we might go get some sugar on top at the end, right? Right, but it's right, like, right. It's four, but it's like here's an elder, another guy that's this age, and the other guys are super young. Mm -hmm. I just want to have a transparency for like, yo, listen, I got a destination. I mean, I got a destination I'm trying to go to with this album, and we all got different routes, right? Yep. But it's like if we combine all them routes and we get to that destination, that's what's going to tell us where we make some fucking magic at. So everybody got to be aligned. Just, just com communication, communication, relationships. That shit is the cornerstone of success. Yeah, Rick Ross was really good at that. Like yeah. making sure he had a hub of producers and yeah, only yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, I remember, like the when I was with L.A. Reid, the last company I was with, like I did a project with them, and. You know, the, the the girl I was working on, but like we bounced around. I put her in with two different people, and then I put her in with um my guy Sebastian Cole and nephew, and they did three songs, and I was like, oh, we're just parking, mm. you know. And then everybody else was hitting me like, yo, I heard you working on. I'm like, yeah, I'm not moving her mm. until we brick. I ain't moving her. She's staying right here. Right. They, That's where the match is. They ended up doing all the whole project. Wow. Right? That's you dope. Know what I'm saying, and so. You know, like, and there's, there's no one blueprint for every, for any, for every yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, you just got to be able to, you know, pivot and move if needed. What would you say to somebody that's watching or listening like, yo, I want to do what they do. I, I love music. I, I probably can't sing. How do I get in? Like, how do I do yeah. what y'all do? I would say the simplest shit because somebody told me this, right? I was, so I, we, I told that story about how. I did all of that stuff, and then Added I started value. my management, my, my management company, and all that. Yo, I had this R and B artist. I I took her to Donnie. I took her to Donnie <laughs> one day, but I took her also to um Rico Love, and I thought, you know, at this time Rico Love was on fire with all the Usher shit and all that, and I thought like I really believed that he was just going to give me like this super fucking duper blueprint right. on like how to, cause I I don't I didn't I mean I know R and B, but I didn't I never worked it. Yo, he said I said Yo Rico like how do I get that? Da, da, da? He's like just do that shit every day. <laughs> and I was like, I thought he was trying to play me. I'm like, yeah. nah, this nigga just told me. But I didn't understand it at that yep, time. The thing talk. about it is, it's like this, right? Them pyramids. We don't know. I, I believe the aliens built pyramids, right? But I'm just, <laughs> but 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 nah. Just this is just an analogy. So like, yeah, like you know, with the um, like I said, like with the pyramids, right? Like I felt like just a little bit every single day, just a little bit every single day, and that's the thing I took away from what Rico had told me, right? Like. While I was looking for this big, super dope answer, it was right in front of my face. Just do something towards whatever you're doing every day. It's like doing push-ups, right? You do, if I can only do five, then it's like that five going to turn into 10. That 10 going to turn into 20, but I got a repetition in doing that shit every day. Just one thing towards whatever it is. Yeah. I would tell, you know, the younger people looking up that just do something towards that shit every day. Yeah. I know. How about you, Chip Star? I mean, to, to add to what he's saying, I mean, you, you definitely got to put your 10,000 hours in. Mm -hmm. Um... But I think the easiest way is also just attaching yourself to something hot or something that you believe in and going hard for it every day mm -hmm. until until it until it takes off. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you can look at any you know, my trajectory, his trajectory, we were we were close to something. You right. know what I'm saying? We were close to something eventually that gave us a name and gave us a rapport. Um, as niggas that like, oh, they they got an ear. They 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 got hot shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you, you wanna you wanna develop that 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 rapport like I got a, I got a kid hitting me now. I'm always going to take his call because he always sends me a hot song mm. or a hot record or a hot track. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm always responsive to him. I'm always hitting him up. You know what I'm saying? And eventually, like, kid going to get his just if that's what he wants to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to put your hours in, man. That's, that's, the, that's the long yeah. and short of it. Start now. That's, yeah. that, that would be my, my, my advice. Start now. Mm. Is there certain <clears throat> A&Rs in you guys' field or that you guys have? I'm, I'm, uh, I have a specialty in this, like, you may not do jazz or R and B. Like, do you like do you do you, Wayno, Do you have like I I'm great at this. I can kill with this. I'm great at I'm great at seeing something at very very early stages and understanding what it's gonna be f I, full potential. Like I can look at something that's like I can look at the seed and see the flower. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I could really and I and I and now the the tough the tough thing about that is. I don't always get my chance to water the seed all the way. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But I can see it, and I can, and I'm I'm good at like motivating, right? Because I I I, I had 
self-esteem issues growing up and shit. And then I started just being sad and angry. You know, growing up in the hood, nothing nothing makes sense. You know what I mean? Like you Promising. come to find out that everything that made sense to us didn't make sense. So it's yeah. like just dealing with that and understanding like, yo, I'm in control of my own happiness and all of that, right? And infusing that into whomever I'm trying to work with. You know, if you 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 get a lot out of like building things out from the ground up. That's what I love. I think that I'm great at that. Like I built I built Dave East from helped him build himself. I'm not just gonna say I built him. I helped him build himself from being a rapper that was just, you know, this kid running around Harlem, putting out a bunch of mixtapes to getting a cosign from Nas and you know what I mean, working that into doing brand opportunities and, you know, eventually helping him start off his his acting career, you know what I mean, which led him into doing all that Wu-Tang shit. I wasn't, I'm not there for that, but I was there mm-hmm. when we did the being Mary Janes and, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we took, we actually, I remember they get, they they offered us a Sharknado. Like, they offered us a Sharknado <laughs> movie. I was like, hell no, we yeah. ain't doing that shit. That would have been crazy. Because my whole thing was, it was this, it was like, yo, if we do Sharknado, we can't do this over here. Yeah. We had a, we had an endorsement from a, um, a soda company that wasn't a good, you know what I mean, a company to be affiliated with. And I'm like, if we do that, we can never do Sprite, a Coke, a Pepsi. And that's what I saw for him. So I'm really yeah. good at, like, seeing things at, at, at a, a very low point and building it out, you know, to where it goes. That's my specialty. Gotcha. What's, your, what's your superpower? Um, I mean, I think I have a great ear, but I, feel, I have, humbly speaking, I feel like I got great gut instinct just cool. in life. You know what I'm saying? Knowing when to make the shift, knowing when to put... This person in the room with this person, you know, knowing when I needed to transition from artist to executive, you know, just in life. Even when I was on doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing out right. here, like knowing when to dip. Right. <laughs> that's, out here. that's a special yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coolio is getting right. out of here. Yeah. That's a special power. Knowing when to dip and yeah. get up out of there, you know what I'm Read saying? Read the room. Yeah, exactly, yeah, man. I, 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 I'm, I, I feel like I've done great at doing that my whole life. Yeah, you know wow. what I'm saying. I think to be successful for for both of us and like a lot of our peers, you got to be able to see the future. Yeah, you have to. You have to be able to see the future. Yeah, like you got to be able to look, like you got to be able to look further than what your eyes could see. You know what I mean? And that 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 even with that, that came from me. Like, man, growing up, I used to be like, man, it got to be something better than this shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> got to be something better than just these blocks that mm-hmm. I'm on every day, going to school, coming here, doing it. Like, and, and then seeing. Exposure, right? Like being able to see different places and saying, "Oh, I want to go here. I want to eat there," and you know that that kind of helps with how we do our jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like exposure is a big part because, like you said, man, being able to 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 have that gut instinct, priceless. Man, it's priceless. You know, this, this this business is 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 partial luck. It's partial gut instinct, man. Yeah, and and it's a little bit of talent. Like when, when, <laughs> yeah. like when it's crazy, like it's a little bit of time. Like you, you like I could show you a lot of motherfuckers that ain't that might not be the most talented people in the world, but they bust their ass every day. That's a fact. And they're gonna bust your ass when it comes down to it. Yeah. A lot of the most talented are, are, are lazy because they, they, they lean, lean too on much that, on, on their the talent, talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of really just doing the work. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta do all three, man. You gotta be you gotta have gut instinct, you gotta have a little bit of luck, and you gotta be a little bit of talented. Yeah, I mm-hmm. one thing I, I just I love about both of y'all is like, you know, I'm looking at y'all now and I I remember when y'all were way younger and mm-hmm. it's y'all not even done yet, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all not yeah. even y'all y'all really even are peaked. just getting started. <clears throat> and I just see like we're so thankful for this art form of hip hop and letting it go into so many different forms. And now it's a multi-billion dollar industry that we wouldn't even have had this opportunity if it wasn't for, for this, Man. right? Yeah. Like yeah. high school dropout. That's a fact. Yep. I know what you was doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's just like, it's a blessing to see that y'all were able to avoid certain you know, pitfalls, yes. and now y'all are executives. They have a career, bro. Like, yeah. Dog. I think, you know, to, 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 to even that, you learn a lot of right by doing wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, there's a lot of right ways to do wrong. You know what right. I mean? But, but, you, right. but, you, but you, you learn a lot of right by doing wrong sometimes. You know, some people got to get hurt to learn. You know, bit, this business, like, like Star said, it's, you know, a little bit of talent. It's a lot of calculated risk. Yep. You know what I mean? Like when we, when we and and I want artists, you know, and creatives to understand this. Like 
when we trying to sign you or, you know, work with you, it's not guaranteed that you're going to be, I have, like, if I was defined by my, my L's, I wouldn't be successful. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look at, like, you look at Mike, everybody looks at Michael Jordan's career and say, oh, he won every time he went. Yeah, but he didn't go every time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he didn't go every time. He went. He went six times and won six times. It's a lot of years he didn't go. All right. and, if you, and, and and the thing about it is six six out of six on championship. Six for fifteen on championships is good. Six for fifteen in shooting is terrible. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you got to learn how to pick your pockets. That's what I really learned. You got to learn how to pick your spaces. Learn how to pick your pockets and just like put you your head down and go. Lose. Like yeah, you, you can't be scared. You can't to lose. be scared to lose, man. Right. I, I, Yo, L.A., like, working working with L.A., man, he gave me so many bars, man. But the, the one I remember him saying, man, he was like, you know, mo- most people in this shit are scared of the fire. They're scared mm. to get burnt. He said, but that's the only way you're going to get hot. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, Lean into that's it. A bar. That's crazy. That's Lean into a bar. It. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to L- lean into it. So L- <laughs> L.A. wasn't at the URL. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Biting niggas' heads all pulled. Like, what? That nigga's... <laughs> Only you know way you gonna get hot is if you get burnt. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. You gotta yeah. lean into the fire, man. That's yeah. how you get hot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Don't mm-hmm. be scared of it, man. Don't like take risks and jump out there, man. Like when I was coming up, I I, I used to think it back on myself now, on my younger self, man. I was crazy, fam. Like <laughs> like nigga, I would I would pick up and leave on a one way to Miami with no return flight, fam. Just because it was BET weekend or or MTV. Weekend or something, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet somebody, like you know what I'm saying, and like, yeah. I met a bunch of people doing shit like that, and I just figured out when I get there, man. People yeah. call me crazy. You got to be a little bit of crazy to succeed in life, man. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow, that's it. Look. Leap of faith. Facts, man. Look, All man, right. we got the executives. No, yeah. listen, I even got, my, but my introduction to Wayno was TV. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't, I knew, I heard the name when you moving around, but I'm yeah. like, when you went into that space, that was a different lane for you too. So I'll, I'll complex. Say, Bro, I'll tell you how I got in that. That came about from me, you know, having relationships. It's not something that I ever set out to do. It's not something I necessarily wanted to do. And I'm not saying that to minimize it. When I first got on that show, um, it was a lot of people who were journalists and everything. And they were saying, like, you know, why why me? Like, why him? Like, you know, he we don't know him. Who is he? You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and rightfully so. Um, But at the same time, it, it, the way it came about was this. Like, you know, I was... Trying to figure out what my next thing was going to be. I had, uh, was working with Dave and, you know, we split, we parted ways and I was on a decline. And what I mean by that is I was on a financial decline, mm-hmm. you know, and cause people think that like, all right, you, you get these deals and then like, you're just set for life. And that's not how it works. No, you know, your no, life, no, no. your life changes, you get taxes, you know, you, you try to live a little bit different. I didn't go out and buy a bunch of, uh, watches and chains. I moved out the hood. So now my family life is different. I got to maintain that. So, you know, I literally just one day hit um, Nadeska because at the time, Nadeska, she used to be uh, she used to be at MTV, and she had interviewed Dave one time, and we just had a cordial relationship. You know yeah. me, cute. Like, I always, what's up? How you doing? Yeah. So I just randomly, she was, she was, Star was on there, and I grew up on Star, so like, I, Star. and Star, like, Star, he's another one. He don't got nothing nice to say about nobody. He always say nice <laughs> shit about me. You know what I mean? He always say, but, but that's because it's like, I grew up on Star. I used to wake up early in the morning before school so I could listen to Star. And, you know, they was going at it. And I just texted Nadeska like, yeah, talk your shit. And she hit me back a week later and was like, yo, you should come debate with us. And I'm like, all right. And I went there that one day and I never left. Wow. And, and I didn't. Crazy. Yo, bro, I literally, I, I went there. I did the show. And it was like, when I was leaving, they was like, that's the most fun we had since Joe left. And I'm oh, like. Oh, wow. And I was like, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. You know what yeah. I mean? And then Nadeska hit me later on that day and was like, yo, we trying to figure out, you know what I mean? a new situation, we want you to come, you know, be a guest on the show. And I'm like, what you mean be a guest on the like, I just was a guest. Yeah. So then, you know, they had me audition. Um, They had me audition one day. And it was just me, Nadeska, and, and academics doing doing an a, a episode together. And, you know, I guess they sent it to the higher-ups, and they said that they was feeling me. And even when I got on the show, I still had to learn. I felt like media was literally me being thrown in the middle of the ocean and having to swim back, back yeah, to shore. Because yeah. everybody, I was always compared to everything Joe Button did. Yeah. It was like, yo, I watch, I'm literally, I'm not even joking, I wear a trench coat. They be like, oh, you on Joe Button dick because he like trench coats. <laughs> I'm like, damn, like, I, I've been like, I can't like trench coats too. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, you dressing like Joe. Or, no Joe, no show. I had to hear everything no about- No Joe, no show. No Joe, no show. <laughs> I had to hear about everything I wasn't. It's, yeah, it's, it's funny, but like, yo, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it didn't, it didn't bother me. I'm from the hood. Niggas joked on me. 
ever since I was four years old. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. Like just snapping. But at the same time, it's like, bro, I had to deal with that mentally every day. Like, you know what I mean? Like being told what I couldn't be or what I did everyday struggle longer than Joe Button did. How long Damn. did you do it? I did it for three years. What? Are you serious? Joe Button did it for like seven or eight months. I think maybe nine months tops. I was on there. I got on that show. That's crazy. Jan- I got on that show February of 2018. We ended it December 2020. Wow. I was on that show for three years. And then I couldn't, what I couldn't believe is how much they was paying me. It's all good. Bro, I didn't know that. No, oh, they, they, they I did paid. not know that Team. people get paid. Oh, Bro, yeah. when they show, I had a car. I had a car service from Jersey to the city every day. When they showed me, I said, y'all going to pay me? Y'all niggas don't have to pay me to shut up now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm it's not going to stop talking. Oh, uh, yeah. You feel me? But I, I did that, and then I was able to, Far you know, I, yeah, I learned a lot from academics, man. I got to say that because a lot of people look at academics as like, oh, he had this or that. He's a genius. He's an entertainer. He know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing, but not only does he entertain, he taught me shit. He didn't have to teach me nothing. I'm older than act. He probably could have looked at me like, oh, this old nigga. This, you know what I mean? People yeah, yeah. don't never treat me like that, but he would look, this old nigga, we trying to be down what I'm doing. Right. I just wanted to learn. So he yeah. taught me, like when I was doing, um, what was I doing? I was I was talking to Amazon, and Amazon had, you know, courted me and was saying mm-hmm. that they wanted to do stuff with me. And I started telling act like, yo, Amazon want to do this down the third. He like, all right, yo, if you're going to do this, do it like this. Ask for that. You know what I mean? If you're going to do a show, do it like this. And I got my own situation. I, yo, I never did media day in my life. Got on the show, did it for three years, and then got my own show. Damn. Crazy. Crazy, Shout out to man. Tim. That's Tim. Shout out to Tim. Shout out to Tim Glover. That's my brother, man. I, I, I love Tim. Tim. Tim, I met Tim in twenty January 2019. That was, I think, no. That was the last year I seen. I always, I always reference that as like. Pandemic. Two, no, two of the last times I seen Nipsey. Oh, because yeah, I because yeah, yeah. I seen Nipsey that weekend. It was Grammy weekend when I met Tim. I seen Nipsey. I mean, I seen Tim at a, a a bowling party that YG was having, and then I seen Nipsey at the Def Jam Grammy party, and then the last time I saw Nipsey was at uh, what was that? At the Dreamville brunch in Charlotte. Mm. And you know, it's my biggest regret about Nipsey. Every time I see this nigga, he always be like. Hey, cuz, come out, come chill with us tonight, man. Come, him and Adam, man, yeah. show me so much love. And I, ne- I, or I don't never go out. So I was like, nah, I never, I'm gonna come out. He like, hit my phone. I never hit his phone. Yeah. You know what I mean, but, but, but I, I just said that because I'm referencing some, referencing the yeah, points. Yeah. But yeah, man, um, I did that and I got my show connected with Wayno. You know what I mean? And I've been doing that for you know some time now. And I'm journal. I, I don't look at myself as a journalist. I really, I really, um, not to say that I'm not good at what I do, but like. I can't take away from the people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into that shit. Yeah. Now, I know that I'm good at it, and I got a lot of love and respect of it, but I don't never stand on that, like, yeah, y'all can't fuck with me. And I don't do that with nothing. Yeah. I mean, I don't do that with nothing. No, that, listen, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, for y'all to do, again, like I said, start where y'all started, mm-hmm. be where y'all at. Um, again, if you're an artist and you're trying to get signed, like, hit them up. I can give you all they cell numbers. No, no, no. no. I can give y'all they cell numbers. If you want they cell numbers. If you want they cell numbers. Fuck, you want to be FaceTime and Dr. Dre out of nowhere. Fuck, you can get you the Super Bowl if I can just sign it. If y'all want to get signed, I'll yeah. give you Sterling's number and I'm gonna give you Wayne those numbers. Yo, listen, Fuzz just... John is just John right here. Two one three. Two seven. No, nah, no. Nah. Nah, but no, we, we we appreciate y'all, you know what I mean, stopping by a lot of and, uh, listen, having man, A&R talk. Man. Regardless to all of us having relationships, I really appreciate y'all taking the time to share y'all platform because oh, it's it's one thing when you know um you just trying to get some content done, but it's another when you really sit down. And we talk about real conversations. And, yep. like, my biggest thing for me even coming here with y'all is because I'm about to be 40. I can't wait till I'm 50 years old and somebody be like, yo, I watched that podcast with you and Sterling. That shit changed my life. Mm. No rap. That 100%. made me, because because that's what Backstage did for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, seeing Backstage, that's what, like, being around all these little different things. Oh, yeah. I'm that We ain't talk about that. I don't really want to get, but that Kanye shit, man. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll just say this one thing. Yeah, yeah. And this is the only thing I say about it because everybody tried to interview me about it and all that. The biggest misconception of Kanye's, I went, I say his Rockefeller career, because he's not associated with rock no more like that, yeah. is that people didn't support him. Um, When I was tweeting about Kanye, which my tweets went viral and all that, I had to mention Ramsey's and Travis and all these other people because... Um, you know, through this tenure, we don't talk about, we don't get a chance to talk about 
the other brothers and sisters that was on the ground with us, and they didn't right. they didn't follow through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's not no disrespect to, to none of them, but like Ramsey didn't get a chance to do the things that I got a chance to do in music. And he was a big advocate mm. for yeah. Kanye. I'm talking about you walk in the office and Kanye in the office playing the music and then he'll play me the music and play Travis the music. Mm. And then that day when they showing Chaka for that one little second, yeah. they not when I, I, I tweeted that Kanye listened to um I mean he played his song ten times. I didn't mean consecutively. I mean ten separate occasions that you could think of in one or two weeks. He came to the office. He did the same thing. And jumped on the table or rapped in front of everybody. And yeah, we loved it the first time, but bro, niggas is in here working. Yeah. He used to, bomb, I'm talking about, he'll like open up your the, door. Bro, he'll, interrupt, he'll open up your yeah. door, plus put his shit on and tell his man record. You know what I mean? And yeah. I mean, I'm not necessarily going to say that that worked for him because his foot was in the door already. He was already 25 years old, produced one of the most important albums of all time. Yeah, all time yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, uh, the biggest misconception where his fans get is that Nobody supported him and nobody believed in him and that's bullshit. Yeah. People telling me what actually happened that day and I'm on the clip. Yeah. You're there. <laughs> you were there. I'm, yeah. No, I'm literally, no, I'm literally got break. Remember when I had yeah. remember when you had breaks. Yes, you know what I mean? Like I'm literally in the clip and people telling me, oh nah, you was laughing at him. I was laughing at that nigga. I remember that day like it was yesterday. Yeah. But you gotta remember too, just you know, no pun intended. The yeah. genius of that was yeah. they were filming a documentary to Early. show. Oh no, he was, was smart with that. He yeah. was ahead of his time with that. But he always thought out the box, and I would never take that from him. The thing was, it was people telling me that, yeah, you heard the song ten times and you couldn't sign him. I was assistant, and I can't sign myself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was in there begging for an extra two hundred dollars a week because yeah. I was getting paid two hundred dollars a week. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get shit. Talking yeah. about I sign him, I even, bro, I could have. I didn't even know. You was happy to be in the studio. I was happy I was even getting $200. I was in the mail room. Yeah. And I was making less than I was making in the mail room to be there. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, I just don't want people to look at that documentary and their takeaway is, is that, because it ain't it, like, and this is our culture, right? Oh, you dick ride and this down the third. Brother, if you got a chance to be a part of it, I didn't go to college. I did, my college was Rockefeller. Yes. That right. was my fraternity. Yeah. My fraternity was state property. Yeah. My 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 college is Rockefeller. You damn right I'ma defend that shit to the day I die. You wanna know why? Because it means something to me. Yeah. Yeah. It it's would real. not be no way no at no fucking QC if I wasn't 20 years old doing the chain gang album. If I wasn't riding mm. on the if I wasn't driving in Ryan Press broke down Shout Toyota out to Ryan Camry. Press. Press. That Burgundy Toyota Camry that we barely yeah, got through snow back and forth through Philly. Going to 17th for Wallace with Chad, sitting wow. in man. you know what yeah. I mean? Like that's my in history. The basement. So yeah. you ain't gonna tell me not to rep my history. You know what I'm saying? He repping his. I'm a rep mine, but I'm gonna just tell. I'm, I'm all I'm saying is just give context because I don't want people to think that people shitting on that man. Everybody the loved that man like, back then. Like, you could take you could take away what you want from that right. from that clip, but everything is timing, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if, I'm sure if you ask Kanye now, like you can't be mad at, the, at, at how it really unfolded for him. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. like, like right. my nigga, like, it all timed out right. Like, yeah. it all worked out. You are on top. You're on mm -hmm. top. By the way, you would have been better off with Rockefeller than you ever would have been over at Raucus. No, no, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or no, Capital. Or, or any, Capital, no yeah. slight to nothing. You know what I'm saying? But the shit worked. It worked. Yeah. You know what right, I'm right. saying? So, like. <laughs> yo, it's so funny because, I be mean, yo, bro. Like, people show the documentary, they, 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 they criticized, like, the nigga didn't end up getting signed. Like, it ain't like... Yeah. He yeah. didn't get signed. Bro, like, and, and, it wasn't hoop dream. And that's the technical, bro. The timeline. That's the, the biggest thing is the timeline. That was 2002, right? That yeah. was 2002. He got signed in 2000. He got... Do you remember um, Champions with yeah. Kanye, oh Chris, Bean? Yeah. Bro, yeah. they had already was working on his deal at that time. That was 2002. Paid in full. That was the soundtrack. Yeah. 2002. He had all falls down all that. Yeah, that's because niggas wasn't just making records and putting them out tomorrow. Right. He yeah. had, bro, do you know, I I can't go on this way by Beans. That shit, uh, filling in the air. Beans did fill in the air in 2002. It didn't come out until 2005. Wow. So yeah. it wasn't that people were sleeping on the record. It's just that people, that we, we took time. It was slow cooked meals. We took time yeah. with our shit. We wasn't just like, Oh, we putting this out tomorrow. Oh, we, we got to keep the algorithms running. We yeah. got to get the TikToks. <laughs> yeah. We got to, uh, like, this shit is really, a, yeah. this shit is, demolition man now. Right. Like. And even when I met Kanye, I met him because Talib and most was doing a show at the House of Blues in L.A. Mm -hmm. And Kanye comes out. So he comes up in the little, in the balcony. And I say, hey, yo, man, I love your beats. He goes, hey, man, I'm a rapper. I ain't oh, a no. producer. I'm a rapper. Duh. And I'm like, the same energy he was giving everybody on the dock. I got it. Like, Dude, I'm like, yo, the vi I had a viral moment 
that went viral years later. He came to my radio show in 04. His tooth fell out. That yeah, Larry, yeah, I remember that. He had, his tooth fell out from the accident. Yeah. And I had literally had a dentist in this in the studio. I was like, dude, you want to, Dr. Daly can, you know what I mean? He's like, nah, he, his socks is all off. But he, Kanye's been Kanye forever. Not he ever, was just bro. waiting ever, to be forever. that bro, person. The first time, and I say this, yo, the first time I met him, it was right after Blueprint came out. He was walking around the office. He had this spread in the Source magazine where he tattooed all the songs from Blueprint, all the songs he produced on his arm, right? Are you serious? Yeah, he, it was in the Source changed magazine. changed his life. Like, oh, he, yeah. He's in the H to the Izzo video doing that, right? So I seen him. I was like, yo, you Kanye, you, you do the beats, right? He was like, yeah, but I rap too. That nigga rapped for me for eight minutes, bro. <laughs> yeah. For eight minutes. I was just like, I don't know what he think I could do, but that yeah. was cool. Like, I was fire. Like, yeah. he rapped Jesus Walks, he rapped All Falls Down, and he rapped something else. It was like a freestyle, and I was like blown away about the shit. But it's like, the, the, that's on, the biggest, that's why I just said, I'm going to always defend that because that's my history. Yeah. So the biggest um, misconception, and even with Chaka, that, that's why I was really upset at because Chaka has been- Chaka's Tell people who Chaka, Chaka is. Chaka Pilgrim. Don't I don't even know Solid. what position Chaka holds, but I know that- She's been an executive for as long as I've known her. When I was a young kid in the mailroom, when I got the internship, when I got the job, she always was there. When I started managing Dave East, mm-hmm. she yeah. always was there. She always, if, if, if you see Chaka, Chaka is so funny. She's like, it's hard. She's at the Gram, like Grammys, J Beyonce dream, her. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's been a person that's been behind the scenes, not just behind the scenes. She ran a video department and marketing and all of that, but she's one of the biggest advocates there is for artists, right? For our 100%. culture. For our culture. Period. Everything overall. And that was the, because you get the mis, the miscommunication of like, remember the, the shit in backstage where Jay was like pushing her and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they yeah. like, yeah, he slapped her because she was, what happened to pre- pre- defending black women? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's a Uchi Wally Wally is one mic, my nigga. Like, y'all got to pick what y'all want to do. Y'all can't be mad all the time. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? Real but talk. yo, again, man, yo, I just want to tell y'all, Really appreciate y'all. For I mean, thank you for all love. Love. Oh, you guys. Man. Yeah, that's a fact. This, this, y'all pivot, doing? this pivot has been awesome. I've been watching all the episodes and shit, man. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm I'm genuinely happy for both of y'all. Thank man. you, man. Happy for y'all, sure. Yeah, it was it was time to not work for anybody anymore. That's a fact. On the on the mic side, like you right, know, right, I know, right. You, I know you still have you still have uh, <laughs> industry. I'm not in the industry. I'm just a, a guy that you know, he's industry. Yeah, a little bit, but no, but no. You guys like it's it's just when you hear about record industry executives, I just think. Think of like, or I've thought of in the past, like Kaiser, and you mm-hmm. know, my guy, you know, I love Kaiser, good dude, bro. no Kaiser, and my guy. But I'm just saying, like y'all, are like the young guns in mm-hmm. the executive game, and I'm so we're so happy for Make y'all moves. and y'all shot. So any way we can support y'all, we we appreciate you guys yeah, for stopping by and supporting us. But. It's all love, man. Already, yeah, man. Yeah, FAQ Podcast, Frequently Asked Questions with Fuzzy and Quincy. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button right now. Again, uh, DM us if you would, or email us at fuzzyandq at gmail.com. If you want to get at them, we'll give you their personal cell phone yeah. numbers right and on. their addresses. <laughs> Instagram backslash yeah. Sterling POV. Yeah. 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 Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, man. Yeah. Yeah, our, our followers are going up. Yeah, Wayno uh, 119. Nah, was yeah, Wayno 119. 119. Is it January 19th, your birthday? Nah, it's, I'm from 119th Street. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, going to switch it. It's going to be Wayno 215 in a minute. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, <laughs> Evan, you podcast. We see y'all next time. Yep. Yeah.